point of it. Because there's a there's an Isaac Van Ostad and then an Adrian Van Ostad. Um, and they do have um, somewhat of a similar style. Um, and then Adrian Ostad. These are all like Dutch kind of Rembrandt-y style painters. Let me move this up here. This is this is the one that honestly I would, this wouldn't actually be a bad place to do a warm up. I mean, it is so similar to uh, how Rembrandt does his um, sketches, you know, how he does, you know, plots out his figure compositions. That I feel like this guy had to have, had to have studied with uh, Rembrandt. But and things get, things uh, in this area get a little, like the second tier artists, um, you know, in, you know, Holland, in this Baroque era, like my knowledge base falls off very, very quickly. I mean, we're talking like Rembrandt, Jacob Jordans, Ruben, uh, Van Dyck, um, Rubens, Vermeer. And after that, I mean, maybe, 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 maybe a couple other guys like Jan, Jan Steen, but even him, I don't know anything about his life. I mean, I know the paintings. Um, so the fact that this guy's included in here, I, I mean, I, he's not, a, he's no slouch. Oh, okay, great. Well, he did have his portrait done by Rembrandt. He was a Dutch golden age painter. Okay, so it was his brother was Isaac Van Ostad. Mm. <clears throat> let's just hear, let's just see what it says. Oh, I guess that's not Rembrandt. He had his portrait done by Franz Halls. That's like even cooler. If I had my portrait done by any any artist of all of any period, I would the portrait would be done by Franz Halls. Because. <laughs> yes, and he. I think he'd be the most fun to sit for. Why? Why? Uh he just had he was able he had like he, he was able to do the most amount of work with the fewest amount of brush strokes so he was just in the zone like the draftsmanship is just incredible and the virtuosity is kind of unparalleled and um yeah in terms of like kind of cap capturing a human being in paint in the spirit of portrait, you know, as like in terms of capturing the essence of a, of a person. Um, I think he's the, I just think he's the best. Um, it looked like he has the most amount of fun too. I just think he's, you know, as far as a musician goes, like, you know, in terms of music, he's just one of those, you know, he's just, a, he's just, he's, and his paintings approach perfection. Like you can look at them and there's, there's not a single backtrack and there's not a single misplaced brushstroke. I mean, it is near perfect. I mean, we're talking like 99.9% um, accurate. And what, is, what, what does accurate mean? Oh, so they were students of Franz Halls. That's cool. They spent most of their lives in Harlem. Oh yeah, his portraits have a lot of character. Ooh, his echo. Is that from Halls or uh, Ostad? Halls. Oh yeah. So this is interesting too. It's like, when you have someone like Franz Halls who is, you know, arguably one of the greatest and you see some of his pupils, um, 
you know, you were, we will be able to get closer to, you know, the thinking of Franz Halls, I would imagine. It depends on how old it is. Um, it depends on how old this guy is when he made the piece. Let me see if I can get to the bottom of that. Ninety-six. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know when the drawing was made. Um, Ostad was born in sixteen ten and then died in sixteen eighty-four. So he made it. He made a good long, made a good run of it. Um, the, the family portrait above the one that we're looking at right now was painted in 1654. So he was 44. And he, and that's his family. That's what I thought. I, there, there had to have been. But we don't know anything about the we don't know anything about the backgammon players. Um, his brother, Isaac, was 10 years younger. Um, it doesn't say much about his life either. All right. Maureen's back in the house. Um, so Stephanie is supposed to be back, but she hasn't, she hasn't followed up. She had uh, some, some surgery that she's recovering from. Stephanie had surgery, or yeah, I think it was like a, it was like a hip or a knee, uh -oh. something that well, she's gonna be off, she's gonna be off of food for a while. So I was like, it's perfect to do the Zoom. Mm. Hey, <clears throat> yeah. So we really don't know much except that he studied with Franz Halls. So that automatically makes him. Very cool in my book, and he had his and he had his portrait done by Franz Hals, so he's he's better, he's better than all of us. Very cool. Uh, yeah. Oh wait, let's go back. So we we're not gonna do we're not gonna do this one because we'll, if we do this one, we're gonna get we're gonna get wrapped up in it, and it's just yeah, it'll take all it class. It, it can't be done. It can't be done. And. The one thing I really did love, not the one thing, there's many things I like about this sketch, but the one of the main things I love about this is that as far as a lesson goes, it's kind of nicely, it's kind of like nicely set up for a warm up. Like this little stool, I wanted to start with the stool and the jug. <clears throat> and then we can kind of like anchor, um, we can anchor the drawing relative to that because the. Uh, it's so low on the on the on the page, so we can actually start, and it's like pretty darn close to the center too. Um, and then we will, so then we'll have the chair, and then we'll be able to build the furniture relative um, to the stool, rather not the chair, but the stool. Build the table relative to the stool, and then we can build the bench relative to the stool, and then we can do the the chair relative to the table. So we can kind of set the stage, literally set the stage with the with the props, and then we'll have the actors um, kind of move in to uh, that stage set, which is um, is kind of a unique way of um, you know beginning beginning the drawing. You know, um, I think it's actually really curious too. Um, there's some like I, I would consider kind of violations of perspective. Um, I think this bench looks so awkward. Like, look how large this section of the bench is and how small that is there. So um, th it, this may be a joke. Like, I think it might, he might be like playing kind of like a visual game. Have you ever seen, you know, that room where, um, you know, you stand on one side of the room. It's like a, it's like a checkered floor. And then you stand on one side of the room, makes it look like you're 10 feet tall. And then you just like walk over four feet and you're in the corner and it makes it look oh, yeah. like you're a mini person because yeah, yeah, yeah. they're playing perspective and everything um i i suspect there might be something like this going on um or it doesn't really matter or it was going to get covered up you know once this drawing 
made it into like a larger composition or something. Um, you know, there's no back legs of the table, which is convenient. There's only the front legs. Yeah. Um, there's no back of the table, you know, the backgammon table. You don't see the back edge of that. So we've got the three planks of the top of the table and then the backgammon game. So those, the perspective of that is going to be kind of interesting, building that cube in perspective like that. And of course, we're going to start with, you know, the front lip of the backgammon game, and then we'll do the side and then we'll build the frame um, inside of that. Um, so the one thing I, I, I'm like, I really do want to not get completely caught up in um, the, you know, the, the, the details of each one of the stools, but um, you know, you can kind of imagine that there is somewhat of a larger plane going on. You see this, like, the, it's almost like if there were a rug there, you see how everything's kind of being, everything's kind of living inside of oh, yeah. this little, that, that little square, that little, like, there's a, there's like a, an implied rectangle because of the furniture. Now, not exactly, but a little bit. Um, the stool is a prism. So without doing the details of the stool, we have the front of the stool, you have this side, and then this side, and then you have the top. So um, you know, from the side view, it's a, you know, a angle with a dimension. Um, this, yeah, that's good. Um, you know, this is just gonna be a cube. You have the, this side of the bench, the seat of the bench on top, and then we're going to attempt to link up, you know, the base of the the, the bench here and the base of the bench there. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be hard to violate the. Uh, it's gonna be really hard to like make the picture feel small like that. It's almost as if it were, you know, a distortion that happened with a lens. <clears throat> um, you know, the 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 chair is a little bit easier in that it's a cube. Um, we don't see any of the back legs of the cube. So we're really only seeing the front, we're seeing the seat, um, and then the, you know, the arms come up. And I think he was trying to make it a little savvy by making this like the, the, you know, the bent wood, the round, you know, back, the, the, um, the back of the chair, you know, the backrest of the chair was, was rounded. Um, it feels a little awkward, um, but you get the rungs of the chair. Um, this is a very, it's funny. It's, it's, it feels very, um, a little Van Gogh-y to me, you know, like the, the emphasis that's put on the furniture. And of course it came from like the same region. So, um, you know, the, the fact that Van Gogh decided, you know, made, <clears throat> you know, if you think about the, the portrait of the old man that we drew, um, you know, there was a, there's a, there was effort that was an intention that went into, you know, the chair and Van Gogh always, um, you know, he always had not a thing for furniture, but I mean, you know, it was something that was part of this tradition um, that, you know, bled over into, um, you know, the centuries beyond even into Van Gogh's, Van Gogh's, uh, you know, world. Um, yeah, the, let's just, I, I think that, I think that's enough of the, the breakdown of the furniture. Let's just do the, the, ta the chair or excuse me, the table. We're gonna have the edge of the table. We're gonna have the side of the table going back into space. Uh, you notice, and, you notice that the table doesn't uh, com conform to the same perspective. The yeah, top of the I mean, table is not the same angle as the rungs of the chairs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so the there's this front face and then there's the top face and then, you know, the A-frame of the chair. So if you, if you follow the angle of the, the table, yeah, so the, the chair is angled this way and then the table's angled that way. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, we want, we're gonna, we wanna be, able, we wanna like relate the, 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 the kind of the perspective of the, each, piece of furniture to itself. Um, we're gonna relate the furniture to each other really through like spatial distances. Like how far away is the base of the stool to the, the base of the bench? You know, where are those 
Where's the, 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 the bottom of the stool with the bottom of the table? So these, the, the placement of the contact points with the ground is gonna be important. Um, but in terms of the angles and the perspective of the table and the bench and the chair and the stool, those will all kind of be like almost like self-contained lines of perspective. Mm. You know, they're, they're like separate buildings. You know, if you had a, a row, a series of row houses, you know, those would all conform to the same because they're all built together in the same set of perspectives. But, you know, these are all, every, each one of these is tilted and turned at a slightly different um, direction. And yeah, I mean, definitely like this, you can see how low the, the side of the table, the, the cross bar, the, the, the legs of the table, how shallow that is, how flat that is compared to the steepness of the rungs. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> it's gonna be great. Um, like I said, I think the place to begin is going to be with the cylinder that is this side. You know, this is the this is one of the objects that is not overlapped, you know, or or covered at all. Um, that, that's actually kind of an interesting point. I'm just gonna, you know. The, the the rungs of the stool on this side it's not the rungs the 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 legs of the stool on this side is overlapped by the rungs and then the leg of that table is overlapped by the crossbar um the edge of the tabletop is overlapped by the jug um the you know the 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 legs of the stool is overlapped by the seat of the stool of the bench rather the legs of the bench are overlapped by the um seat of the bench and then the seat of the bench is overlapped by the man so there's except for the jug um <clears throat> and actually the jug is overlapped by the handle of the jug um you know this this leg of the stool might be one of the few things that is just kind of independent is, the, is clearly the thing that's closest to us um it is a cylinder and we can you know we'll relate the legs you know and in a triangle on the floor and then relate the the tops of the legs with the triangle of the seat um and you know this is not they, they, these are not kind of mathematical calculations these are um for show it's for show you know it's um it's to play up it's kind of like i don't want to say cartoony but the value here isn't showing isn't like they're not like the artist isn't attempting to display how much he knows about math in the way that the, the, the Italian, you know, painters, you know, the Italian Renaissance painters, that was their intention was to prove, you know, their depth of knowledge of the geometry. Um, you know, this is, this is a way more casual approach. Um, and again, it's for, it's for the, it's playing up the, the uh, drama of the scene, I think, and the playfulness of the scene. So let's like even talk about that. Um, so we should kind of know what's going on in the picture. So it looks like it's a, a priest of some kind. Um, and I mean, I'm only saying that because of his hat. So, um, you know, there's that, it's a, it, the, these guys are playing backgammon. That's the title of the piece. Um, and we've got the game board and, you know, how, I, I don't know much about get backgammon, but you know they're they I don't I can't tell if they're in a bar. I mean maybe they're in a bar. I mean there's this like this could be like an ale jug or a wine jug. This guy's smoking a pipe. Um, this guy down here feels younger. Um, I don't know why I'm I, I think that, but his hat's on sideways, which is kind of interesting. Um, maybe because he's just his maybe it's the proportions of his face, maybe peeking out. Um, but you know, it's obviously an it's an engaging moment, and I don't know about backgammon, but like, you know, it looks like he could. He, this could be the moment where he lost, <laughs> you know, like, where he's like standing up and is you know looking. You know, are there no more moves? I mean, is backgammon yeah. like? Is it like chess? I mean, is it like? Oh, it's you, it's a great game. It's just you roll dice right. and and you move the discs around. And, you know, if you land on one of theirs, they have to go back home unless you've got two in that spot, then they can't land on that spot. It's, it's a great game. It's fast so moving. How, how do you win? What you, when you get all, when you get all of your discs that are in front of you all the way around the board to the other side, you get them all, 
So he's the guy on the left is moving his stuff around to the right, and he's moving his stuff over to his side. The stand. Is it? Is it um, and is it? Is it? Is there strategy? Oh gosh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, there's some luck too. Like you, you know, rolling dice, but there is total strategy. Yeah, yeah. Because you, if you leave a disc alone in a spot. If you have two on a spot, then it's safe. But if it's alone, then somebody can, if they roll that number and land on you, they can send you all the way back home. Then you got to start over again. Yes. Uh, maybe I'll learn. I'll, maybe I'll learn backgammon. I, it, is, um, it is such a great game. You can learn it quickly. It's a lot of fun. I think I may have even played it when I was younger, but it wasn't, it didn't become a staple in our house. So. No, I didn't. Um, I didn't play it until I was an adult. Um, I, I'm shocked that it that I didn't realize it was this old. I didn't know it was around back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. No, I, I mean at least back in the 1650s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The day. <laughs> but but you see the guy, the little guy in the back that's observing. Yeah. Um, he's he's got his elbow on the table underneath the other guy's armpit, like um, I think. Is that what that is? That's his, look how chubby his arm is. Yeah. Yeah, it's so puffy, it, so puffy. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really big, fit him. I don't know if it's the fashion or, I mean, it's Northern Europe. So, I mean, those could be like leather jackets. I mean, Just it could garment. be- garment, yeah, okay. Regular, regular winter clothes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and the, uh, you know, so this, this guy's face is in loss profile. Um, he's, this guy is probably three quarter of you. Yeah. Um, you know, this person we are, so that's the other thing as, as the viewers, we're kind of in a unique position because we're above looking down. Like, I don't know whether we're, um, up on a platform looking down or whether this is even like standing looking down. Um, you know, the perspective is, I would say would, I would say is like kind of atypical, um, for, you know, you know, defining a scene. It, it, it's, you know, I hate to always go, I hate to go back. I feel like lately I've been going back to Cezanne, but, um, you know, Cezanne had that, you know, that famous painting in the barns of the card players, you know, yeah. and they were, those were kind of in profile, you know, so this is definitely, um, you know, it's, it's just like the, the theme of, of, of playing games. It could be an interesting, uh, you know, a, an interesting little, you know file to look through paintings and organize them um i don't know i don't think i've really you know done that i mean because there's banquets and then there's religious scenes and then there's portraits and then there must be like a whole tradition of uh you know kind of like peasant games um it might be fun to think about um all right so i think did stephanie get back to me she did what'd she say she's not in the waiting room Oh, she's teaching on Tuesday and Thursday. She says hello to everybody. Oh, that's too bad that she can't join us. I know it is a little too bad. <clears throat> um, okay, should we should we should we attend to this? Um, the other thing that this is um, pen and wash. The nice thing about the the image that I sent you, um, it. So in my version, it's a slightly lower contrast, you know, in the book. But the version that you like, the photograph was able to actually pick up on a lot of the ghosts. So there's, um, there's like, looks like there's like a little angle on his, like, like an echo on his shoulder down here. Um, it looks like there's some like, you know, some horizontals and some vertical. Look at the, you see this vertical line that runs through the side of his head, and then runs through right through the middle. Um, you know, like basically the middle of his neck. You see that oh, shadow yeah. line? Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's a really important vertical. Um, and I mean, I don't. I'm not seeing any. I'm not seeing any more ghosts. But that is not an accident. Um, the fact that it hits the side of his head, the side of his head, and runs through the center of balance. You know, um, usually the, the the center of balance is the seven cervical vertebra. So it's like you know, th right through the middle of that you know he's leaning forward so the head's leaning forward and the body's counterbalanced um it's it's nice it's really nice 
Um, some of the other ghosts that were under here. Nothing is unaccounted for, which is also really nice. So every mark that you make on here, you'll, you're gonna be able to say is wood, is clay, um, is fabric. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really what, that's, oh, there, look at this. There's a, um, I think there's a pipe on the stool too. Huh. All right, so the question is, how am I going to negotiate all of these elements? Um, maybe I'll use a thinner piece of paper so that I can fold it. All right, that's big enough there. Okay. Got plenty of room. Oh, there are my kitty cats on there, though. I can't use that sheet. These hold. We're almost there, people. Okay, so my paper is going to have to get folded up a little bit, but that's fine. This is a working, this is a working document. Wait for this. I think, I hope, I think there's gonna be some, I still think there's gonna be some gems. I think there's gonna be some gems. All right, shall we? Let's do yeah. it. All right. Oh. Dear Lord, give me, give me strength. Oh, look at this thing. I, uh, oh, I played, I, I showed this to you the other day. Cool. This is my, this, this is my transition to readers. <laughs> well, readers still hurt my head. I haven't made, I haven't made the full blown commitment yet. Um, all right. So, oh my gosh, let's do it. Let's do this thing. Um, I'm going to make my parallel lines. From your, from where your vantage point, these should be vertical, shouldn't they? Yeah. 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 They, they um, seem to be. One of the other interesting points I've noticed that I've noticed that a lot of artists take extreme liberties with um, with how they make ellipses. I mean, to the point where like everybody, it seems like everybody's playing by a different set of rules. Um, at the very top, you know, where the, where the um, cylinder turns into the top of the, the leg, you see how it looks like it's a straight line across? It almost feels like a horizontal. And then it makes this really aggressive turn and then it straightens out in the back too. And the top of it is broken. So there's a little gap right here, or at least it's a little bit lighter. So my point before about the ghosts, there's clearly um, a, an enormous amount of pencil that was used initially um, in creating this design. So we can anticipate that um, by either making your drawings really light and then coming back in with pen um, or just treating graphite as if it were pen. So you can start lightly 
um, and then you know punch your darks um, you know as needed. So that's what I just did with the, the top lip of this. I mean, I I, I have my, my this pencil is able to go you know dark enough, and I'm already drawing a little bit large, which isn't my nature, so that's fine. Um, we can I love the, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which way should we go? I mean, let, let's do let's do the um I guess we'll do the base. I think it's safer. I, I want I'm I'm so attracted to the top of what's going on at the top of the stool, but we should do first things first and we'll use our kind of imaginary line um to build the base of the um stool. So we have to estimate how far away the leg is and these are and they're related by the plane of the ground so this side over here that side over there the, at least the left side leg and the right side leg are at the same um you know elevation not that i made it at the same elevation um and we did the first leg so that we didn't have to so nothing was overlapping it <clears throat> that's usually a good rule of thumb um, especially working with, you know, teaching younger students the, when parts are overlapping, it can be very frustrating. So go for the part that's not overlapping first. So like the outside of the stool, like the leg of the stool, do the outside of the leg first. Um, and then you can work the inside and then you can estimate the distance from the inside. And then you get our first kind of um, dowel or rung that, you know, I, I got a, uh, I don't know what my Instagram algorithm says about me, um, but I get, I keep getting this ad for a, um, it's like this super ax. Um, it's like a bush, Bushman, you know, like there's like a guys that like to go out in the woods and like build little shelters and things and spend the night and chop wood <laughs> and, and there's a, uh, there's like this screw that you can like screw into the wood and it makes a hole. And then you have at the end of this end of this tool, there's a, um, a cylindrical, uh, basically a, a, like a, 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 a cylindrical um, blade. I don't know how, you, so what basically you take a thicker piece of wood, you know, um, a, a thicker stick and you hit this cylindrical rod in there and it makes basically the plug for a dowel so like you take you know it would, you would carve into um and you can make stools and you can do all this like woodsy bushcraft i think it's called bushcraft anyway i do i do go hiking hiking in the woods a lot um all right so there's these two rungs and um they don't seem to be staggered so that's nice so at least where the each leg of the stool um, has a dowel at the same elevation. And the back one seems to go almost directly in the side. And so it's really, it's a matter of keeping, keeping what's what straight, um, you know, in your head. And I'm, you know, it looks like one of the things that can be helpful is looking at what you would call negative space. So what, you know, we've drawn the rungs, we've drawn the legs, the first set of rungs, we drew, drew you know, the positioning of the legs. What is the space, what is the triangle that's created between this leg and that leg? Is it close to the same size um, as what is the picture that we're seeing? Is it grossly out of proportion? You know, it looks as though my triangles are, you know, they are not exact, but they are close. They're, they're close enough that I'm going to keep going. Yes. Um, other notes um, of artistic um, technique um, or concept, you know, the underside of the rung um, that is used, you know, is employs a darker line. The, the marking of the, the foot on the ground is indicated with the darker, with the darker edge. So the line weight is helping to describe the light. Now <clears throat> we do, 
like so wonderfully have a light source that is coming from the left. And we know that because if you look at the shadows on the floor, um, you get a cast shadow. And so the rungs of the chair are actually throwing the shadow on the ground. We'll see how far back those go. Now you might, I mean, I'm thinking even in my own head, I'm kind of questioning, have I gotten into too much detail without even getting to the top of each one of the legs? Maybe, um, but I think it's also important to note you know, where the light is coming from so that we can more intelligently draw the rest of the piece. The sooner you can get those answers solidified in your head, you know, the easier the whole rest, you know, the less blind you are the, for the whole rest of the piece. Okay, so I'm gonna try to, um, I'm seeing this back rung down here and I need to make my leg, it looks like a little bit taller. So I'm gonna have to abandon my, my beautiful cylindrical top. And I can build my rungs off of that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying not to resist. Um, you know, I, I was trying to keep my stool in a proportional wheelhouse, um, not go grossly larger um, than the book, but it's grown. It just grows. And I, and I, and I don't know what to do. <clears throat> and who cares if I have a big stool? The, uh, the I can make the table smaller. I can make I can I can fit everything on. Uh, I, I, there's flexibility. Once you see that each one of the the each one of the pieces of furniture could be designed independent of the other, um, it makes it easier. Whereas if you're drawing, you know, a deltoid. Um, on one side of a figure, the, 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 the deltoid on the other side of the figure can't be out of context. It has to be the same um, or else the, the figure looks awkward. Um, these, are, these, these pieces of furniture you know, are, um, are independent of each other. So I'm, I'm, I can give myself uh, more flexibility. Okay. Look at the top of the stool. I love these little... It seems as though on this side, there's like this little dome, like this little, it actually reminds me of my, my little tool here. See how I see that, see the side of my little magnifying glass, how it yeah. creates a, dome. It's a cylinder and then it creates a dome. This little white cap here, you know, feels almost more like that, but it's all right. The back rung I know is going to pass all the way behind. I'm not that concerned. I'm more concerned about uh, fitting my pipe perhaps some flint. Um, and the, the wonderful thing about what's happening with the pipe and the, and the flint, you know, a little, there's some like little packet next to it, is that they're further echoing our, the nature of um, the light source. So, you know, the, the point of contact and the underside is darker, just like the rung, just like the stool. Um, and then I suspect the, uh, the jug. So the jug has this wonderful uh, base at the foot. And then there's a little miniature neck from the foot that leads to, surprisingly, a perfectly spherical um, body. Usually they're more oval, but this one is a perfect sphere. Happy day. And then so we get the foot and then the neck of the foot, the belly of the body, and then we have the neck of the spout. And that's going to be an ellipse as well. Now this ellipse, we have a cylinder We've had you know a series of cylinders actually with the with the legs and the rungs. This is our first cylinder that is hollow. So we're going to be able to look inside of this cylinder. And the light's coming from the left. So it's the inside, left, the left side 
the light is coming from the left, so the inside of the jug receives the shadow. Um, it looks like he didn't make the effort to do it, but I erased the side of my jug on the right so that the handle, there's the inside loop of the handle and then the outside loop of the handle. Um, it's so small, but you know, just for the record, the handle is probably has a thin side and a more broad, thicker um, width. And then where the thumbprint happens is where the artist squishes the wet clay into the body. And you know, also the, the, the opening, there would be a thickness to the, you know, the lip of the jug. This, these details are all, um, they're not lost, but they're just very, very reduced because of the, uh, the scale of the drawing. Um, the sphere, you know, in terms of like, we haven't even shaded anything yet, but I think we should. <clears throat> Um, and I think it's probably better to even shade the jug just so we've gone, we've done the sphere exercise. Like, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know how many times this group has done the sphere exercise, but it's really nice to kind of put it, put it into, see it in its like natural environment, you know, rather than just in a sterile class. Um, you know, there's a, there's like the, the highlight and then the, the jug transitions into the shadow mass. And then it gets to the core of the shadow is on this far right side. And then there's this little moment of reflected light that is, I wouldn't call it artificial, but it's definitely contrived. So you have the silhouetted edge and then the shadow and there's this little, <clears throat> There's this little glow on that right side. And that is just pure, just pure art school right there. We'll see the neck uh, of the foot is in shadow because the none of the light, because the belly is so big that none of the light is getting under there. Yet you do see a little bit of light side of the foot itself. And you can see that the, um, the jug throws a shadow. There's this little beautiful S curve right here on the cylinder of the back rung. And this is real. I mean, this is what he's thinking. This isn't just even that little shadow, the edge of the shadow right there <coughs> um, is from the cast shadow of the jug. And it seems to uh, disappear before it gets to our little dome. And the dome is like this little beacon of light um, because the, 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 the whole leg of this stool um, goes into shadow because it's on the far side. And the, you know, the, the, um, the tabletop that is the seat of the stool, um, none of the light is kind of penetrating that. So the leg goes in shadow. Probably not using my tortillion enough. <clears throat> so the stool legs um, really are composed of a shadow side, a shadow, a shaded uh, leg, a half light, half shadow, or maybe you know, two thirds light, one third shadow, and then the the light, the shadow, the leg on the far left is almost entirely in light, which that could also be contrived. How do you guys feel about the Oregon Grill being purchased? Oh, didn't know that. Well, I I live really close to it. Um, yeah. I'm just I'm just around the corner from the Oregon Grill, and we we kind of got tired going over there because in the 14 years I've lived in Baltimore, the, the menu hasn't changed, <laughs> and and it's pricey. 
Yeah. Then, um, Kristen and I went like a couple weeks ago and yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, this place definitely needs like a facelift. A facelift, right. For sure. I, mean, I, I love the I love the piano player, you know, and yeah. yeah. I, I love the whole thing. I mean, I like in a, in a way. I I love the fact that it hasn't changed a lot. You know, like that that is right. that's, a, that's a comfort in some ways. But it's also I'm like, I thought the same. I felt the same thing. I'm like, you know, this this is going to be good. I think it's ultimately going to be good. It's still a little bit sad because you're like, you know, because it's change and there's something that was such a fixture. Right. <clears throat> Anyway, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be good. And I the mean, Valley Inn got bought by the same people and they had their facelift. You know, they had their facelift like five or six years ago. Uh -huh. So that's already up and going. Whatever. It's always the people that make the place anyway. So. But I am probably going to go to the Oregon Grill more than I ever have ever gone in the past in the next couple of months. And yeah. Because I can always... I'll reminisce and I love sitting by the fire in the bar room well and see we went a few weeks ago with another couple and they put us upstairs by that fireplace and yeah, never... it was super busy so the service was not good and the fireplace kept filling the room with smoke Gosh. and so well, we were that's like what, choking that's what it was it There's was I didn't even feel like sick. fun. <laughs> a I lot thought, of things like that. Yeah. A lot of things like that have happened. Yeah. It's time. It was, it's time. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like, yeah, it's like getting that new, that new, Sweat, it's like letting go of the old sweatshirt. <laughs> uh, okay, how did you get how? how oh, I'm missing stuff. Okay, so I'm not missing that much, but um, the neck of the you know, the cylinder of the neck of the bottle can get shaded. There's some interesting dark notes, um, and you know, the, the bottom of the handle that can get shaded as well. Um, and then I'm thinking about just, you know, punching some of my, punching some of the darks. I mean, some of the, there's a dark crease where the, the rungs are intersecting. Um, this back lip that can be shaded more. The back of the stool can have some darker silhouetted edge. You know, you can try to get away with as much as you can with the line without doing the shading. I mean, it's, if you look at the whole piece, I mean, it's mostly line work. I mean, there is definitely an indication of it, like light side, shadow side, and you know, value transitions. But I mean, it is very, you know, it's very line heavy um, as far as a uh, you know a, 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 a drawing goes. <clears throat> um, and uh, look at how look at this wonderful. You have like the the long stretch, and then towards the bottom it. That shadow cuts over a little bit towards the base. That's about that. It's an elegant, it's an elegant uh, shadow transition. So what appears to be like a kind of a rough house, a rough uh, and tumble type of sketch, you know, there's this, there's there's a lot of consideration going on. Um, in, you know, in the in the in the program, and I and I'm I'm already I'm already really happy, you know, in terms of what I've gleaned, you know, from from this, and like in terms of like right art thinking. I don't know if that is uh, that makes sense, but there's there's basically everything that you need um, in a drawing is in, is here, and what the the reason I, I think it's healthy to resolve um this stool the way we are is that a lot of these themes are going to be repeated um all the way throughout um and that and it's the it's the it's the variety it's the it's the themes that give the unity 
and it's the variety that gives the the interest and the excitement and the uh, uh there's going to be things <clears throat> and it'll you know, also you know be control it'll it'll you know show the it'll strengthen our control Mm -hmm. I think it would be easier. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let's see where we can go from here. Wondering if we should do the bench. Where, where do you, where did, has anybody kind of moved ahead? Um, no. and made the, no. made the decision still already? Working on, still working on the table. So do you think we should do the, do so you think we should do the, the table or do you think we should do the bench? Uh, the bench on the left. Let's do the bench on the left. Yeah. Or what do you want to do? I, I, I'm not sure. Well, you know, generally my, 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 my go-to mantra is, you know, be, start with the known and move into the unknown. And, you know, what's known now is the, is the stool and the jug. And the thing that's immediately relative to it is the is the table like the legs of the table yeah um, and the you know and yeah so the art teacher in me thinks that we should make leg and the edge of the table you yeah. know i think we should put that in there just because they're they're the they're like easy answers i mean look at the <clears throat> i mean if you've drawn your jug like the lot the edge of the table is just immediately next to that and yeah. then the top of the the table top is also um you know right there yeah i agree no matter yeah. how much i really want to get into the uh get into the rest of it i think it's i think it's i think it would be smart to do the table um and it'll increase our chances of success success so i'm willing to hold out on the uh delay my gratification um for that yes okay good i'm glad i I'm glad I, we talked through that also the fact that the bench is so skewed uh you know can can really throw off your whole drawing if you're not careful right I think so. good point I think, I think you're right <clears throat> all right cool that looks good this looks good amazing actually um move this slightly over yeah so so it's nice to not have to um kind of worry about the whole rest of it just yet <laughs> um i actually feel like i can manage the the table here now um when we get into the backgammon game i'm a little scared of a little scared of that perspective but we'll see all right so we've got the the edge of the table and then we've got the, you know, this. So the way the legs enter into the table, um, the tabletop is not the first thing. The legs don't go into the tabletop. The legs go into this under, this under piece of wood. Um, you know, the thing that would that the bubble gum would get stuck to. There's a like a probably rougher, probably a rougher piece of, you know, less showy, less leveled, <clears throat> um, maybe even a raw, rawer piece of wood um underneath there so that's something to consider so there's the there's the corner of the table and then there's the corner of the you know the, where the leg is attached two separate things i'm going to attempt to gauge the angle not make you know it's definitely angled upwards um but i don't want to make it too steep one two and i'm using the there's three planks so at least initially i'm going to use the height width ratio of each plank of wood to help now the other the other thing that it's important to recognize too which is more of like an architecture thing the the edge the verticals you know the separations the edge of the table is going to be vertical and then the the space between the planks those are going to be vertical. Now the angle, you know, up or the angle back, those are always varied. Um, but if there's a vertical, it always remains vertical. 
right here's the side of that table, side of that leg, leg comes down, leg comes down, leg comes down. Oh, that's an interesting moment. That leg passing behind the entire yeah. stool, actually, you know, in contact with the ground. So this is where you, you know, you, you got, you hope, <laughs> you hope that your your stool is positioned properly because you know mm -hmm. I got the leg nice, but like the um, the crossbar. Oh no, actually the crossbar is not as bad either. So the crossbar overlaps the leg, and there's the top of the crossbar and then there's the side of the crossbar wow i'm i don't know how i'm pulling this off right now because i didn't think my stool was very accurate there's the front which is nailed into the leg again i'm going to put that that buffer layer of wood that is visible underneath the planks of the table and it actually you can actually see it through the handle of the jug and if your proportions of your jug and stool are off you know the re the relationship of this table all bets are off I so know. You're, which is okay so i am very lucky i'm holding my get, breath yeah that I, got, that I got this right what you need, if, you're, if your proportions are off, what you need is the top of the table, that angle. And then we're gonna do the left leg and then the right leg. We want this right leg in relationship to the planks. So this the leg that's on the right is on the left side of the far right plank. And I wonder if that, I can't tell, but I think the leg itself might be cylindrical. But the bottom's gotta be shaved off. Cause uh, the legs are an A-frame. There's a crossbar, A-frame. The top of the A is the table. The, 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 mid, the bottom crossbar of the A is a uh, rectangle. So there's a top and then there's a front. And that's different than the shape of the leg. The leg is a cylinder, I believe. <clears throat> now, it's, it's strange because our instincts are like, the table's not done. We need to do the back of the table. We need the other two legs. Like, how are we gonna get this? And the truth is, is that if you put the, the side of the table here, the table is actually done. I cannot even believe it. Like if you, if you keep looking, there's no other table. The, the back of the table is, resol is resolved by the backgammon board. So how um, get the angle of the separation between the three planks, and then the angle of the the angle of the backgammon board is, I think, conveniently um, aligned with um, the the table. At least it's straightened on the table. the The side of the backgammon board is a vertical. And then the, you know, the top and bottom, those are angled. <clears throat> and it's interesting because if you look at my, look at my drawing, um, I'm starting to make, you know, the table not shallow enough. And the table needs to be flatter. And I could measure that like with a pen or I can do it by eye. I don't think I, I, I think I just corrected it right there. Hey y'all, thanks for um, 
thanks for sketching with me on this rainy day i mean it's this is kind of like at home art class kind of weather <laughs> I mean, like perfect weather for in true art class. true true um, and it's cozy i could i should put i should go my coffee again <clears throat> Whoa, that looks good. Um, and then, okay, so let's, I, I think we should just keep going with the backgammon board. The edge of the table and the backgammon board are very similar, if not parallel. I mean, if not synonymous, coincidental, whatever you want to say. It's it's essentially the edge of the table kind of bleeds exactly directly into the top of the backgammon board. The back corner ends right about here. And then this angle here and that angle there flattens out. Unfortunately, I have to open my fold up a little bit. Um, you want to think about the thickness of the backgammon board. Um, you know, it makes this like inner tray. So we wanna do the walls almost as if there's a train track on the top of the frame. And it's gonna go all the way around. The, it goes you know, literally around the entire board. The, the, the backgammon board is a, is a wooden frame. And then you can add, you can add the piece of wood in the middle. And then that's what gets you the trough. It is a, you know, it, do, it does get sunken in. And that's in, you can define the sides of the middle. You can define the sides of the table um, by using our, our shadow. Tone on the side of the table, the front of the board, the middle of the board. I suspect the back of the board too. But this is where the artist, um, you know, the the perspective tends to is is like kind of falling off. Um, you know, there's 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 hands in there in the mix. Two hands for that matter. And there's like pieces inside the board. Little, little cast shadow, I love that. Um, the front of the table top, or I should say the sides of the boards, those go in shadow. I always loved these parts of the boards because sometimes you could see the, um, you can see like the grain of the wood. It's not obviously in these details, but just as a personal note, uh, I love seeing the, um, you know, the, the way that they cut the length of the they cut the length of the trees in this way and you can they make these like gorgeous arches depending on you know depending on the the section of the the trunk of the tree that they cut i might be romanticizing that a little bit but why not i mean but that i mean that's a wonderful detail that i enjoy there's um i don't know what they're doing I think, you know, I, so I've been, I'm teaching at Gilman four days a week, if you can believe it. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically running their, their after school art program. Um, so on campus, there's this huge trunk that looks like it's being split. Like, I don't know if the kids, are, like the high school kids are like learning how to split wood with an ax um, or if it's for a shop class or whatever, but it's this like huge, huge drums of these sliced pieces of wood and they're, they're slowly getting chopped up each day 
and it smells great. Um, and they make just like the most wonderful, pure um, geometric forms. Like you get this like width of the tree and then it's got this section of, uh, and then all this like splintered wood. You know, so you get the grains running this way, the fibers that run this way. And they're all, um, you know, there's little chunks sticking out. They're just, it's just the most beautiful uh, thing. So I've been enjoying, I've been enjoying watching that process. I think that's, what, I think that's where um, the, uh, the nature of the wood on the table came from. And so now because of the, because of the shadows, we have, you know, there's much more unity. It's the, the table relates to the backgammon board. The, ba the outside of the backgammon board relates to the, the inner addition. Um, and then um, and then these are, you know, forms that are running, you know, in perspective, but running horizontal. Um, and then the stool is, has these rungs that are the legs that run vertical. And they're kind of on the same size, you know what I mean? Like they're relatively the same thickness of the wood. So being able to relate, you know, elements running at an angle versus running vertical and all kind of sharing um, the same light source. Um, we're really bringing the unity of the composition together, um, not with perspective as much, um, but, you know, with the, with, the, with the shaded parts. And I, and, you know, this whole, this whole leg, um, there is definitely a hierarchy of uh, values going on. I mean, the backgammon board is more significant, you know, than the stool. I mean, it's the, it's the subject of the piece. Um, so by giving a deeper shadow against the lighter forms of the wood, you know, brings more attention um, to that object, which is natural, um, but is also a decision made by the artist. It's not just, it's not directly observed. I think that's a really important thing to think about too, because, you know, there's so many art, you know, so many teachers or schools or, you know, schools of thinking where it's like, kind of draw what you see. And that's true. You need to draw what you see, but you also need to, you need to compose, you need to compose um, what you see as was what you draw. So you draw what you see, but then you compose what you draw. Um, so I zoomed out a little bit and I love it um, being able to look back a little bit. And um, now I'm actually at a position where I can finish the uh, cast shadow of our stool on the ground. And this cast shadow is uh, really establishing a, a solid plane, not linearly, but with the tone. So even in my mind's eye, I can see the floor, even though there's nothing on the floor. I don't know what the texture of the floor is. I don't see a rug. I don't see stonework. I don't see bricks. Um, I don't see grass. You know, there's no, the, the, it's nondescript. The, the shadows, the, the, the ground is defined by the shadows on the ground. Well, Shall we do the uh, the papal player, the papal player, <laughs> or the cardinal, <laughs> whoever the guy is? Um, I don't think it would hurt to kind of go back into space that way. I mean, if you think about it, he really he is the main subject. He's the subject of the piece, um, and we're able to see that I think a little bit more clearly now. You can see his whole face. Um, he has a hat that distinguishes him from everybody else. So he's got a, a distinguishable hat. He's got spectacles, which I think even for this time, um, you know, are somewhat of a luxury. Um, and he's standing. So he's got all of this. You can see his whole face. So his face is not cropped at all. Um, he's got a hand up to his face, almost bringing more attention. Um, the the guy on the other the other side of the of his his opponent, he's looking at this man. So his opponent, though you can make a case that he's like larger, um, he's seated, 
and he looks exactly he's wearing the same outfit as the guy that's next to him and his face is cropped and in shadow and you don't see the eyes so you know he's definitely downgraded on the number of uh, you know on all of those points um and so you know that that those are all intentional um design positioning staging um decisions that um you know that that help tell the story so that being said i think it's probably safer for us to go from <clears throat> the stool into the table and then the table into the standing figure um because all of those are relating and i mean frankly that's where your eye i think is supposed to go and then that brings you up to the to the the standing figure playing the game and where he's looking that's what brings you to the game to even know that there's a game being played and then you go to the seated figure his opponent and then that figure brings you up to his buddy because they've got the same hat on they've got the same jacket on um they might even be the same person maybe even be the same model for crying out loud <clears throat> Um, and then there's a, there's this kind of little the, the figure the supporting figure in the background that kind of gives you it's almost like a you know like a little a piece of like icing you know it's you if you go full circle so as you come back to the um, you know to the cardinal I'll just call him the cardinal um, as you go from the cardinal to the game the game to the opponent the opponent to the opponent's friend smoking the pipe. And then you're back in and you're you re-enter into the side of the cardinal in the person that's like leaning on the table. And you, know, you can see the sweep. I should probably have been pointing to this. So you enter into the picture through the stool and the jug, and that brings you up to the to the cardinal. The cardinal goes down to the game, and then you wrap back around. So it's like that's the, <clears throat> the movement of the picture. It's great. So I guess what I'm saying is that if we're going to start with the stool and then go to the game, put everything in context, the, we should draw the we should draw the main figure first, so that everybody else in the cast is supporting him. I guess that's the other reason to do it is that your main everyone else needs to be anchored um, and relative to that man, and then conveniently it also. It's on the fold of my paper. We'll get these three. Okay, this goes here. Um, great. So the unconventional method of beginning this figure, um, you know, beginning from the known into the unknown, we can bring the leg, his right leg, uh, the left side leg. Um, we can bring that relating all the way back to our original stool and the dome um, at his kind of his ankle leading up to the calves. And then he's got these kind of stockings, which is the separation between, you know, the, the humerus and the tibia. And it makes, um, it's almost like baseball, play, you know, the well, old school baseball pants that go right below the knees. So you have this like, spherical bulge that is the knee and then we can use our x-ray vision to kind of pull that thigh up above um, the table and the the anatomy of the leg is um you know hidden slightly by um i guess you would just call it like an apron which might change the identity of, um, you know, might change the identity of our, of our character. Uh, this, you know, he could be like the butcher or the baker. Anyway, he's definitely wearing an apron and we'll try as, as the, the knee is rounded under the table and in kind of intense shadow, this might be the most shaded portion of the entire uh, composition. Um, and that's it's it's that leg that makes the you know the dome of our far side stool really pop um, because it's a light cap of the stool up against a you know the dark shadow of the leg. So interesting. Um, so as the the knee is rounded on the other side, 
you really have a, a nice change of direction. So you have the top of the, the thigh hitting the, the uh, kneecap and then turning the corner. And you have, again, this separation between the, um, the thigh and the kneecap, the whole knee joint and the calf muscles. I'm going to use a, a simple egg shape for the calf muscle. And that's going to transition into the trapezoidal um, descent into the ankle. And then the nice thing about this shoe, man, it gets almost like the, like the, a nice uh, a nice collar to a t-shirt. It's it's loose. It gives you this ellipse. So the the leg passes through the ellipse, um, you know, into the structure of the foot. So you have the, the heel, and then you have this almost like a clown foot. Um, or you can think about uh, Chuck Taylors even, you know, where the, 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 the plastic tip of the shoe um, gives you that like half dome. And then you get the thickness of the sole. Now, my leg got extended, got longer. I don't think it was my leg necessarily as I think I just got excited about the, the anatomy of the shoe. So the heel I think is overall a little bit smaller as is the, you know, the whole toe. So that makes it a little bit more reasonable. Looks like my leg might be a little long. I think I got excited about the entire thing because it's very simple geometry. And again, very classical. Um, and it's, and I like, it's, it's, it's reassuring in a sense. Um, there's a little split in the fabric. You, know, you can, you know, it's weird. You can hear the, um, you can hear the training um, in the drawing. And I just like to think that that is, uh, I can hear the voice of Franz Halls through this guy. And, you know, I've said this in the past, it's, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, the second tier, it's not that this art isn't great. It's just, if you were to go to a Franz Hall's portrait and you can just be, um, it can be you can be overwhelmed with um, his genius and just the, the impact of the art, um, which goes beyond um, the technical. And, you know, when you have people that are, you know, have learned from those great artists. They employ a lot of the same ideas. They're just not sh sh clouded or um, those ideas are able to come to the surface because they're relying so heavily on them rather than being, you know, fused with, fused with genius. It's more helpful for the art student. So the, there's a relationship between the table and the uh, the structure, the uh, understructure, and then the the knee, and then the apron, and then the um, the hand that's on the on the edge of the chair that he's using to push himself up. This thigh is going to disappear behind that arm of the chair. The, convenient, the nice thing about the arm of the chair is that we have uh, dealt with something similar in the stool. So we have our, you know, our cylindrical column that's running vertical. And it's even, um, it's even uh, parallel. So or is it? Here we go, Grace. The look at this. Do you see how the leg of this stool seems to angle to the right, and then the leg of the uh, yeah. So the it, the top is further out than the bottom on the stool. And if you look at the armchair, the top seems to be further to the left than the base. Ah. And I don't know if that's and I and I, I think that's optical. 
I, I think it's an optical illusion because I'm looking at it from my perspective in, in here and it feels very vertical. You know, it feels intentionally vertical. I think because it might be the light. They're all tipping, so. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's a exercise that they teach in school. Um, you know, generally after you've been working from the figure a lot, usually when you start with the figure, um, if I were to draw this guy independent of the rest of the composition, um, you know, I'd start with I'd start with the head, getting that axis point, and then he's leaning forward, so you do like the top of the shoulders, and then you do the front of the torso, and he's got this short squat torso, um, and then you know you can use a little bit of X-ray vision and build the front of the pelvis and then the side of the pelvis. <clears throat> and then out of the out of that you get the the legs so you get the front of the thigh and then the side of the thigh the front of the knee block um, and then the legs come you know the, the calf muscle and you could build planes out of the calf muscle as well calf into the ankle and then you get the top of the foot the front of the toe and then the side so this is how I would, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to go from head to toe. Um, we'll get the, the front of the thigh, the inner part of the thigh, and then the front of the knee. And then he's got his oval, the oval of the calf muscles leading down into the ankle. And then the, which is not featured here, but you have the feet front, top, laces, front, toes, side, foot. Um, so this is all behind, you know, the, none of this is pictured. Um, and then because you have the tor the head, rib cage, and pelvis, those are like the three anchors, you can build the limbs off of that. So when you have the, um, the, the thick leather garb, um, these jackets were interesting because uh, most of the arms you know, in today's convention, the shoulders start wider and it gets narrower at the elbow. Um, these fashions, you'd have a narrow pinch at the elbow and they actually get wider um, at the elbow. So, the, I mean, they're narrower at the shoulder and they get wider at the elbow. So you have the front plane, the side plane, and then you get the elbow to wrist elbow to wrist and then you get the top of the hand and the palm I should say and then you get these fingers curling over um Grace what were you gonna say I'm saying that's this is really helpful okay good yeah the angle of the body yeah thanks uh, yeah no I feel a little I feel a little bit bad for not having gotten into it earlier <clears throat> um and his face you, know, you find the center of his face and you find the cross you know, there's that cross in there. That's what gets you the glasses. That's what gets you the nose. That's what gets you the mouth. And then, you know, the chin underneath that. So the whole profile of the face, you're not really seeing. Um, he's got this, you know, big bulbous forehead. And then his little kippa. And then the hair comes down the side. Anyway, um, the face is, is, is kind of something else. Um, there seems to be, you know, the waist is the, it's a, such a high waist that it, it really doesn't fit with anatomy. I mean, his belly is actually below here. Then there's the high waist. And then there's a, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the collar comes out from the, you know, because I, and hopefully you saw, that I built this cube where you're really seeing a lot of the top of the shoulders because he's leaning forward. You know, usually it's a little curvy, but I, I'm, I blocked out the plane, but the, there's a, have you ever heard of a gib line? Your gib line or your jib line. In military um, talk, there's a, uh, there's like the center of your uniform that's all supposed to be lined up. Like the tie lines up with the buttons and the buttons line up with the waist. And like, I think it's called a gib line. I just learned it last night. My buddy was a merchant marine. 
So um, if you look at the gib line, you know, the center of this torso, you get the, you know, the split of the collar, which comes actually out. And then you find these, the, 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 the center of the shirt that's buttoned up, that first angle, that's basically the sternum. Um, and then it dips in because the, from the breast, you hit the acostal arch, which is thinner, and then leads into the belly. So this little dip in here is actually like the bottom of the breast and the top of the rib cage. And then it swells out again, um, you know, because he's got, you know, some weight underneath there. So there's kind of like this, a fat roll that's underneath, which is awesome. But you, you can really see the folds, um, you know, defining both the top of the shoulders and the breast, and then, you know, just like the, the, the pectorals, they pinch into the corner um, and some of the fabric um, in the armpit pinch, you know, the same way the muscles grow. So then we get a um, shoulder to elbow, and then the, the elbow is just one big turkey bone. So it's like almost like a teardrop shape of that forearm. Um, you do get the little point like the L, literal, the L shape of the elbow. I mean, this is the L even going in the right direction. And then there is a, um, a blocky wrist. You know, when I say blocky wrist, I mean, the way that the, it's not the way that the, the leg went into the shoe, it was an ellipse. The way that the, the wrist goes into the sleeve, it's a block. Then we can just use an oval for the fingers right now. <clears throat> that should make things a little bit nicer, and you 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 can understand um, why the uh, why a whatever it's called um, the apron is so flattering. I mean, you get the you, know, you get this upper roll, and then this lower roll of the fat, and then God knows what happens down there, and then the uh, you know, where the way that the you know, the belly and the legs all meet together, you can just you just put one nice straight sheath covering all of it, <laughs> yeah. and you can actually see the the way that the fabric is pulled taut. Um, also suggests that the it's tied in the back. There's probably a um, you know a string with a little bow. <clears throat> well, let's see. We'll let Kristen in here. You text me. Mm -hmm. No, no texts. Yeah, that's not so bad. I feel like it did pretty good. Um. The uh, once you go from the, the the nose into the mouth, and then there's this teeny little chin, and he's got the double chin. Um, it's a narrow path up the side of the head. There's a little indication of the ear, but the main thing I'm less worried about that. The main thing is that there is a um, a white collar that helps separate the face, um, you know, from the the jacket. And it's just amazing how these little fashion transitions um, are helpful for, um, they just look good. Just like the way that the, the belly of the jug transitions into the foot. There's that little, that little concavity. And that, I'm, always, I'm always impressed. Um, okay, so I had to, so this is how I would have engineered it regular. Um, now I have to you know, reverse it. So I'm pulling this thigh, you know, this thigh up here. I'm doing the hand and then the wrist. And then I'm going to get this. He's got these kind of short arms, but they're beautiful trapezoidal forms. Um, that's, that'll be helpful too. I didn't mention this on the other one, but in this elbow, look at this little triangle. You see this little triangle right here? Mm -hmm. It really helps going from the pure geometric, uh, like pr pyramid um, of the wrist. So you have the 
the wrist that is a pure pyramid, light side, sham side. And then there's this like extra piece of uh, triangle that then allows for the, the same form, you know, a pyramidal form uh, to enter into the shoulder. That's cool. How did I do it in that time? I guess it was a little, it was a little ambiguous on the last one. We come up from the gib line, <laughs> the roll of the belly through the center of the sternum and then it will angle into the kind of the little necktie. I wonder if there is actually a necktie. And then I'll get the collar. Um, one of the things you can do, you know, when you're putting plot, plotting a face, um, you, know, you can think about it almost like a mask, like a hockey mask. And the reason that's important is because the hockey mask covers the front face, but you can see the side of the head. And that's what, that's really what's important here. So you got to be able to see that there's an ear, that there's like the side, you know, the hat, you know, runs along the top of the mask, but then the hat keeps going down the side of the head. And then on the, you know, then when you see that there's a mask, I think it's like easier to place, um, you know, where the, the holes to the eyes would go. And then if you get those eyes, then you can get the, the nose and then you can get the mouth. And then from the mouth, you can then get the chin. And, you know, the, there's this, it's almost like a, uh, if you're wearing a party cap, you know, like one of those like triangle hats that has the, that elastic band. So frustratingly pinching, um, that's the edge of the mask. And it's just it's an important um, division. It really divides the head on the, in half, you know, the, the center line on the front divides it in half, you know, bilaterally. And then the, the, the birthday hat string uh, divides the, half, the head in half um, you know, near the ear. Some dome from the hat, Got thin straggly hair. And then there's a little bulge by his neck and then the trapezius down into the deltoid through the, the back of that. So made him look a little bit like a hunchback, but that's okay. I don't think, I think it, I think the hunchback fits with the, uh, it's the narrative. I love the turkey bone metaphor. The drumstick, not the turkey bone, drumstick. It also has eyebrows. It does, look at this. So I've got his spectacles that are these ovals that are kind of close together. And then the spectacle, the eyebrows really do help. I mean, eyebrows are such game changers. You can always tell when somebody, uh, you can, you know, there's, there's always, sometimes there's portraits, there's like, ah, oh, there's just something wrong. Yeah, you know, when the kid makes a sketch. And a lot of times the, the spectacles are left out. So there's the, the mouth the corner of the mouth that um, kind of shows his age and his you know body fat percentage and then there's this little the little tick mark um it's a little teeny dot that is above um in between the lip uh and and the you know the top of the chin 
and then he's got a little chin, and the left chin is framed by the double chin. Uh, so I put the fingers in there. I drew the, the the bottom of the pinky, and then the rest. It's it's interesting because it's the the pinky. What's happening is that there's the there is the pinky. So there's one, two, three. This is the fingernail. So this is kind of this block that we're looking for. And then you find the same block with the ring finger, and then you find the same one with the middle finger, and then you're probably going to get this roughly the same thing with the uh, index finger. Um, you know, the thumb's going to come behind like this, where you get the fat of the hand. the The reason that this is so confusing, and it took me a long time, not a long time, but to be able to verbalize it. Um, it's, it's so small that it's, it's really hard to see, but the difference between the pinky um, and all the other fingers is that you actually are seeing, and that's why his pinky looks too small and it's a little, and it like kind of reads as being incorrect. Um, there, the, the, each finger is a, is a, is a three-dimensional block. So there's a fold, a wrinkle, a set of wrinkles here. So you see the top of the pinky the top of the pinky and then you're also seeing the side of it so believe it or not there is a 3d cube that you're witnessing the side of the pinky and the top all the other fingers you're essentially seeing just the top and ever so slightly the side and in the front you're really only seeing the top so you're seeing the top of the middle finger and then you know, it could, and, and it, and like the, the fat of the hand, the, the chubbiness of the fingers, you know, you barely even see the plane really. So say this is the top, it's going to, it's going to bend down in. So you're, 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 again, you're seeing the top, you're only seeing one plane, the top plane, front plane, and then not the side plane. But with the pinky, you're seeing the top and you're seeing the side, completely the top, completely the side, completely the side, the top, completely the side. Um, every you know finger has its own knuckle, you know, and, and so that's what defines the silhouette. Um, this this is what makes this pinky feel way too small because he forgot the thickness of that plane. So I don't mind, I don't mind correcting Mr. Ostad. Um, some of these uh, the undersides of the fingers are going to get darker. And then the, you know, the, again, remember the light is coming from our left. So then there's going to be a glaze, a light glaze over, you know, the whole mass of the hand um, that faces away from the sun, the, away from the light. And that same principle holds true for the wrist. And <clears throat> I kind of celebrated the, um, the blockiness of the cuff, but I should have, you know, also reiterated the, the blockiness of the wrist itself. So there's the side plane of the wrist, which is light. So I'm going to lighten that up. And there's the underside of the wrist, um, which is in shadow. So I'm not going to, I'm not faulting this guy too hard. It's a small drawing and he's using, com and compared to like the thickness of his, uh, the nub of the pen, it's a very, very small finger. And you know, the, and I don't think he has problems with hands necessarily. It's just the scale of the drawing compared to the size of fingers, um, you know, aren't, this isn't ideal. Did that, was that explanation uh, oh acceptable? Very. Okay, good. <clears throat> Knuckle, knuckle, knuckle. I love the uh, profiles of hands. And you know, with hands, it's, it's way easier to study all of it 
and once you've mastered all of it, then the, tr then the, um, it's, you're capable of abbreviating it. It's not like, it's not like less can't be more unless you have all of it and you intentionally reduce it. So there's no shortcuts to hands. Um, when they're small like this and you can abbreviate them, you can do that. Uh, hands can be really fast and they can be virtuous. Um, Franz Halls was actually very good at hands as well. That's another thing I love about him that he didn't have any blind spots. Franz Halls had no blind spots either. Zero blind spots. Um, at least not that I can find. I wasn't able to find. I haven't found any. Um, there's artists existing on the highest uh, level of um, artistic thought. Anyway, the um, there's so many blind spots that can occur with hands because they're usually drawn small, um, but there's still so much content, so much information that in order to do it, you need to do an abbreviated one, you have to know first. Anyway, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no getting out of mastering hands. I still, I always get a kick out of the, when the elbow actually makes the shape of an L. <laughs> Little things. <clears throat> All right, cool. Um, before I start punching my darks, I thought we had a nice little system going um, with, uh, with the stool where we basically did the line drawing and then we laid in some of the shadows and then we punched the darks. And you know, we haven't really done that even with the backgammon table yet. I really haven't pushed the darks that are on there, um, but maybe the table and this figure um, can kind of be done almost at the same time. So I will finish the chair um, and then I'm gonna come through, well, no, maybe not yet. I, I will add some, some shadows you know, at least some tones. So you have some tone on the side of the kippa. We have some tone on the side of the head. The back of the hand is all blended. The arm, the inner part of the bicep and the bottom of the forearm are shaded, shaded. And then that form throws a shadow onto the shoulder. The whole head is throwing some tone, um, you know, on the side of his jacket and the back. Of course, we already did the, the arm that has some shadow. I would suspect that there's darker shadows inside the armpit and you know and the, the whole side of the body so that that arm can be you know this light that's you know that the arm comes in front of the body so the body being dark that recedes uh, the arm would then come forward side of the thigh the leg as it goes underneath the table you know the front of the leg would normally be in shadow but since it's behind the table it gets shaded same with the same with the stocking and the shoe. Um, I'm not afraid to lose a little bit of my, my line work here. The lines that I use to define the edge that actually gets worked into the um, pigment that will be the, the, shat, the, the tone. Nice. <clears throat> Overall, the, um, the table and the, the figure on the far side, you know, his, the, the, the guy's opponent, they're throwing all these shadows um, onto the ground plane. So I'm, it's a little dangerous throwing shadows um, onto the ground from objects that you haven't defined. Um, <laughs> but yeah. we, we know what's there. <clears throat> so we've got uh, this hand, the, the, the way the whole hand can be set up is this, um, the trapezoid, you know, the, there's a real bend at the wrist, um, change of direction at the wrist. And we're going to see a series of bumps that represent the knuckles. And if you make four of them, it's helpful. And then from in, in between each one of those arcs, you can then, where those touch, you can find uh, one, two, three dots and that dots are the hairpin turn if you look at my hands here i spread them out there there's webbing you know in between each one when i close them that webbing just like the corner of the mouth uh, they turn into hairpin turns and if i bend it even further you can see my knuckles which are those arcs back here 
And there's a separation between the arcs at the back of the knuckles and then where those hairpin turns separating each one of those fingers. So I probably should have zoomed in a little bit, but that's all right. So I did the, the arches of the knuckles. Then I did the three dots, which represent the hairpin turns between each finger. And then from there, I can get the, um, the lines between the fingers. And in the way that this pinky um, had the top plane and the side plane, the index finger is showing the top plane and the side plane. So the, the, the index finger is going to be, almost appear to be thicker than all the rest, but it's only because you're seeing uh, one plane. Three, and then the silhouette is the pinky. I mean, that hand's huge and I'm okay with it. One, two, <clears throat> and I had to, I had to do the hand because in order to do the, the hand is the known, the chair is the unknown. So I can build the, this is another fun, fun um, method. We should probably, well, let's say yeah, we're not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to remain disciplined. So we have the, uh, the, the arm of the chair, which is also the base. And then we're going to come back we're going to find the second uh, structural vertical of the back of the chair. A rectangle, just like I was saying before, if you do the outside first, you get the base and you do the outside, then you don't have to erase quite as much when we do the rungs. This rung attaches one rung. Two rungs. And then the third rung is the seat. Of the structural vertical. And that goes on the top. We can build the angle. Oh, did I luck out? Pretty lucky. Oh yeah, my hands are bigger, so that's why. All right, good. Um, we'll have the back rung, the back of the seat. Hopefully that's the right angle. And then we'll do the front rung. There's no rung there, but I'm gonna fix it. If it needs one. Get the seat of his pants coming in front. That needs to be shallower. Um, you could um, use x-ray vision. You could build the other half of the chair. But the reason this curving backing, I think, is awkward is because I think he invented it. Anyway, yeah. um, let me show you up here. The rung of the chair is going to be a 3D. Uh, it's not a cylinder. It's, <clears throat> it is a thin thickness and then a broad uh width the height so you want to follow the train track of the thin top and then you're going to see the outside until it hits the bend and then that bend that we're visualizing we're seeing the outside and then as it curves then it replaces itself by the inside so again if you stick with the top the flat part then that can the, that will guide you for the inside of the rung and the outside of the rung. <clears throat> it's a really beautiful. Uh, it's it's also really pretty. It's just a nice geometric form. So at the hand, we could, you could even show the contact point if you want. You know where it needs to attach. It needs to attach to, to the the uh, to the whatever it is, the where where the hand is covering that front part of the chair, and then we'll wrap around. It kisses the back. I'm just gonna wrap around this way. So we'll make the thickness the inner rung. It's thinner as it goes back. 
and we'll do the side. That's almost easy now. And then we'll do the inner portion. The outside is going to be in shadow here. And the inside will be extra dark as it passes behind the arm. That was cool. It's like it's such a relief not to do the second and not have not to have to do the second half of the chair. I mean, it's weird because it almost feels wrong. All right, so um, with the chair and the man, at this point, it's almost like more about what is in light than what's in shadow. The whole chair is in shadow. There's a, a little bit of light on the top of the rung, of the, the top of the backing here. That's an important part. The, the front of the arm, that's an important part. Um, the top of the back of the arm, the back you know, corner, that's darker and it fades to getting light. You know, all of down here is all like kind of reflected light. Um, I forgot to do the second set of rungs. Okay. You know, it's important. I remember Van Gogh left that part out on one of his, on one of the stools on the old man the chair i guess on the old man um yeah there probably should be i would imagine there would be even another rung but maybe that's they didn't do a, a rung behind his calf muscle <clears throat> so i'm gonna again use some of my silhouette edges to shade gently and then i can throw the shadow from the chair onto the ground bottom and now um, I'm really almost behaving uh, like the pen, the graphite is a pen, and I'm just going to really pull out the line work of the, of, the, uh, of the chair and the man. I kind of went, and, and, and the table for that matter. I mean, it's like I got the system in my stool. And then um, I only, you know, really, I didn't really resolve the table. I haven't really, because the table had to be done in context of the man. And then the chair had to be do, and then, you know, so like the, the table had to be finished by the man. So I didn't finish the table. And then I did the man. And then the chair has to be done in the context of the, the man. And so I didn't finish that. So um, I might actually go back to the stool and see if there's anything I missed there. And then, you know, I've got the unifying tones of the, of the, of the light. You mean, when I say the unifying tones of light, I mean the unifying tones of where the shadows are because the light, um, the light is showing and then the objects um, form the, the shadows. So I have, I have the, the light source to find with each one. Now I'm, it's kind of like I need to like, you know, quote, draw the drawing and Pull out, pull out some of these. Uh, everything's there. It's just nothing's really quite finished um, on this right side. So I think I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm far enough along. I mean, I could, in theory, you know, put in the guy behind and then move over. But I, I really want these elements. There are four major elements with the stool and the table and the man and this chair. All of those, if I can get those working, um, I'll feel really good about um, you know moving forward okay back to the stool um, you know there's the line work feels like it's pulsing do you see that it's like it's just there's never there's never a regularity it's always slightly varied it's fascinating I mean look at the under it's super dark down here and then it it's consistently, you know, it's it's a thicker line, but then it gets even thicker at the edge. Like, I mean, I don't know. You can, I don't know what kind of sound effects you want to make, but <laughs> <laughs> I 
There's a, uh, yeah, you can think about it like, like a heartbeat or a drum beat. And you do that so you don't miss anything. You want to, you want to like, you want to, you want to feel the, uh, the line variation. Like it were, uh, like a bass drum. Look at all these little relationships. There's so many little relationships down here. It's really kind of fun. Well, what is the top of the cross beam versus the vertical of the leg versus the horizontal of the um, spool bar? It's just wild. Yeah, and you can see where the line begins and then where it ends and you really can, you draw the line rather than using the line as a, a, a marker or indicating of an edge. If you want to design it like it's a, like an aesthetic, it's an aesthetic uh, instrument, but an instrument of beauty, not a technical a technical record. Also expresses the texture of the wood. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes, totally. So yeah, you're making the line in your right brain, defining it with a darkness or a thick or a thin or an angle or a vector or whatever. But then in your in your left brain, you gotta be thinking, you gotta be thinking, you know we have wood and like unref you know kind of like peasant wood you know this is not the same it's not the same furniture that you'd get at the uh you know this is like bar room it's bar room furniture not um cloister furniture it's, it's probably unfinished wood isn't it yeah I mean, that's what it feels like. And that's where I think it, the, the playfulness of the, like the, the flexibility and the irregularity, you know, like if you were doing like a really clean, like Louis the 14th like style, I mean, it would, you would take a very different approach than this kind of barroom game room banter. of the like the line work and the leg of the caliber you're able he's able to you're able to make more of a thick line because so much of it's in shadow There is, you know, people even today like still buy like handcrafted you know, pottery and drinking vessels and eating vessels. Like, <clears throat> there's something really nice about having, you know, that the human touch in the, uh, you know, in in the in like kind of domestic. Domestic instruments, pots, pots, pans, chalices. I have a I have this wonderful clay chalice. That's one of my favorites. We just have all the the, the spectrum of refinement.
and it doesn't necessarily mean quality. I mean, you know, the stool could last centuries. It could be well made, but um, bulky. bulky. And I think we did off, a, you know, a reasonable amount of uh, content for the morning. I mean, this is a lot of, this is a lot. This is a lot yeah. of different types of objects, you know, net, you know, needing to be relative to one another and relational. That's his thigh right here, great. Look at this little intersection of his leg the, and like the, the two types of the table and then the leg of the table. And I was like, there's this little piece of fabric. And I was like, is that the, it looked, it, it's too low to be the, too low to be the um, apron. And it's, it's the back of the thigh. And when you have the elements kind of plotted out then when you go back, you know, going back in and ref refining the line, you can you know, just develop the information on the even even deeper level. It's like a, this is what you consider like the second pass in a painting. You know, the first pass, blocking everything in, letting it dry, and you know, and then the the second pass, really you know, fixing all the things that you, that didn't get done the first time. This could even be like this. Even third pass. Okay. Good boy, yes. <clears throat> What's difficult under there is that you have the same values or very similar values on the shading on the leg and the shading on the floor. Yeah. And some of the pulsing of the line work, I mean, it could have been the nub, you know, it could have been just the, how the, um, you know, how the material took to the paper, you know, all of those things, all of those factors, I mean, it could have been intentional or it could have been happenstance and then, um, you know, maximized you know, or used in a useful way by the artist, you know, sometimes it's it's like a situation where it's like you know you get you know God gives you lemons to make lemonade you know it's like the way that paper and a material interact you know when you're applying it are you know it's that's not up to you you know it's up to you to figure out how to make it look the best and work for the subject that you're trying to uh, represent. Oh, that's a great shadow. Look at that little cast shadow from the, the rungs on the inside of the chair. Happens again. The slight use of passage in the rungs could probably be played up a little bit too. I wonder if that one's unbuttoned. Hmm. 
then the folds are a um, sort of a whole nother pair. But there's luckily there's not that many folds. Um, they're more like pinches. And um, if you look at the, there's a better example of it over here. You see how the, you can really see that the, the vest you know, is separate and comes out above the sleeve. And mm. there's this little triangle underneath that corner, which is this little cavern. You know, it's like this little environment that exists in the separation between the sleeve and the vest. And, you know, in our, in our, in our priest, you know, or our, uh, or pastry chef, I don't know which one you want to call it, but um, <laughs> slightly tighter. Do you think he's wearing a vest? Yeah. I guess he's got yeah, buttons. I it yeah. I think it's standard. You know, they wore sort of sometimes they were leather jerkins. Oh yeah. Um I liked it. I liked um I'm just you know reassessing I haven't really looked at once you've once we've delved this deep into you know a particular part, I mean I was imagining, you know, there'd be like a little string tied in the back, you know, of the apron. And if you look at his little, like the stockings, you know, where his pants meet the stockings, there's a little, little bow, see a little thin bow over there. That's, it's, it's neat. Like, it's almost like you want, like he, he, you want, he wants, you want to see it back there, but from the angle you can't. So it's almost like he satisfies your desire to see the, 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 the bow um, mm -hmm. in the stocking on the other side. Um, that being said, and there's another one down here, which you wouldn't know that that's what it was. Um, you wouldn't know that that's what it was unless you had this over here. And then the other side note, it looks like this is open on this. And so this little slit here, it looks like there would be a drawstring, but it is. Uh, it might be hanging down. Fun. You see that thing hanging down, maybe. Yeah, I know. I was thinking about that, too. Maybe that's what maybe. Yeah, it could. It could. Could be that little string or a partially untied one. Yeah. Which might reveal the status of this man's position in the game. So my whole, my, the whole head, I had this like lurchy kind of guy going. So I, I, I pulled up the, the profile of his cheeks and then showed the hair and then, um, you know, limited the back of the head here. So um, I a little bit more room for his little collar. So I, I made him look a little bit less, uh, more naturalistic, I would say. Less of a, one of the uh, monsters. And when everybody draws um, in the beginning, you always just want to draw the silhouette lines. And you know, when you draw silhouette lines independent of the construction lines, um, it becomes chaos really quickly. Um, having invested in you know the the sketch per se, um, now you've kind of earned it. You know, you can you can like get lost in the the nature of the silhouette line of the sleeve. We'll see how it curves in, see how it swells out. You know, there's even a little sleeve, you know, under, there's an undershirt underneath that cuff. You know, there's like a little cuff there. Um, see how the folds go over. You know, don't, um, you know, in the beginning, you can't, you're not allowing yourself to see those details mm. and kind of denying yourself that for the sake of the whole. Now that the whole has been addressed, um, you know, this is the time to, to indulge. 
and I, I can't, and you know, there's so many people that they go, they'll go to art school and they'll be like, don't draw the silhouette or don't, you know, don't get, don't do any details, stop doing details, do the, the general. And it's like, you get, you get the details kind of beat out of you and the silhouette line, like it's some kind of like, you're like, you're like breaking the law or something. And it's really too bad because you've got to, you have to like kind of return to that. It's everyone's instinct is to start there. And, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just when you deal with more complex arrangements, you have to, you have to forego it only for a little while. You just got to really let yourself come back, come back um, to the silhouettes and come back to the details and don't be ashamed of the detail. I don't think anyone in this class needs to hear that, but some people need to hear that. Like, guys, the 20th century is over. You're allowed to do details again. <laughs> Do I detect an impatience with impressionism? <laughs> no. no, it's more like deconstructionism and minimalism. <laughs> It's like the, the 50s and the 60s. Remove yourself from Spotify already. It's over. Well, this is nice. That was fun. Yeah. I have to meditate for the next three hours because then I have 12 second graders. <laughs> My condolences. I, and, I, and I don't have any help either because everyone, everyone needs to get like a background check. And I didn't know I had this many kids in time enough to get like, you know, a background check <laughs> in order to in order to teach so hopefully that gets remedied soon but i i mean i've never i've never taught that many second graders but I'm, i mean i guess that's not true we got 12 on saturday but they're not all second they're like second third and fourth so i have like some fifth graders that like anchor the class and the young kids are not as so i don't know what to do I think I just might come in and like slam the table really hard and scare them all. <laughs> no, I can't do that. <clears throat> no, I think they're actually gonna be really well behaved. It's the it's the fifth graders that think they're the king of the hill. So who do we draw next? Yeah. Um, um yeah, it's oh my god. No, it's not that. okay. Whoa. All right. So for a second, I thought, and it, I, for a second, you know, the guy that's sitting on the chair, the leaning on the, that's leaning on the table for a second, I thought that this was his leg. And frankly, it could, it like, if you look at this oh. leg, it could be his or his. Oh my gosh. I never thought of that. Yeah. Think... And what, what, about, what about this? What if this guy here, what if his leg was bent and his like, Hugh was like sitting here. He was like sitting on his foot a little bit. You see it? Like this leg could be bent underneath. And then, and then this, this, this could belong to that guy. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think the next thing to do is, you know, you have this relationship between the knee and the edge of the stool. That's a beautiful gutter, just a wonderful gutter. Um, and then you have the hands. Um, with the backgammon table and the table. So, you know, that's, you know, it's we it's interesting because I, I think perhaps I'm looking at, now that I'm like more familiar with the drawing, I have a feeling that these two were sketched together. Um, 
and this wasn't part of it like this back thing here like there was something else going on i think these two are sketched together there is a real disconnect between this world and this world and these two guys feel very related to one another you know um in execution so so i think as you sketch this guy though um you know that center line you know the the line that's the back of the head and the middle of this character that the ghost that's good the ghost is going to really allow you to relate you know the the, the, the seated figure with the um, standing figure look at this gutter too so i mean i guess the guess i what i would do is i would do this third character but i think he might have added that at the end you know i feel like this guy might have been it could have been him and him i think we should see this whole composition without this this little guy i mean he is undoubtedly i think i mean my chance i think the chances of that being you know last minute decision i think are really high um yeah yeah i think he's an afterthought you know maybe so maybe that he felt there was too big a void underneath the underneath the the arm Agreed. you know agree i'm actually i want to see our drawings with him and him and him you know finished and be like, what was he thinking was the matter? You know, what was the matter in here um, that he needed to put this guy in there? And I think it'll become obvious. Maybe I can photocopy it, just cut, cut that figure out. <laughs> What's down here? I mean, I don't know. They, could that be like some match, some expired? It looks like they look like cigarette butts or something. My guy just looks like uh, a person playing playing chess against himself. Um, let's have a. Uh, do you mind if we have a little show and tell? You know, I, it, it, am I blurry? Uh, is my face a because I tried to. Pretty, I tried I to keep my camera off and it just is right, I think it's I think it's you're just pixelated. Whoa, cool. <laughs> this was really hard. <laughs> That's really good. Look how fat my guy is. He's a little he's fatter a, than he should be. <laughs> oh no, he's a, he's a fat guy. Um I made I made the head smaller and it made it better. So I don't know if that's what, if you want to do is, that. The body is, looks. Is awesome. my head is my head too big? Uh, Slightly, not much. Okay. Yeah, not much. I'm trying to look at the. Well, I think I was trying to add to the fullness of his face. If you drop the eyes down inside the oval a little bit. Okay. Like yeah. Oh yeah. His forehead's not big enough. I I noticed that. Make, Smaller, more condensed kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Please send me a, a, a photo of that because you, you know, the camera is not blurry, but it's pixelated. So the depth okay. is. Okay. I'll send you a photo. Okay. I, um, I really so, enjoyed doing this. I did too. I'm this is so really... fun. Let me see. I, let me see yours, Grace. Yeah, I'm going to pin Grace, I think. How can I do that? Oh, yeah. There it is. Okay, Grace, you're pinned. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Really good. You're so Van Gogh. <laughs> I think you got it. I think you nailed the dimensions. Mm. That's really good. It's so resolved, um, the shading. Yeah. Yeah, well, this um, is new, you know, this idea of getting into this much detail on a piece of it before you get 
you know, yeah. at least ghost it all in. You know, my right. instinct would be to ghost the whole picture in, mm -hmm. you know, like we did last week. Mm -hmm. and then and then work in the detail but you know yeah i think it was important i think it was important to to, to get to go from a a to z yeah dag nice looks really i mean these, i mean they're just they're awesome they're awesome and they're better it's better even than the original you know I mean, to be able to to like <laughs> come at it, come at it with like i mean we're a couple hundred years later and we have um have the luxury of you know like like less pressure i think i don't know they just the drawings are they they're, they feel a lot nicer you know they get it's less uh i don't know what it is they're just they're just calmer somehow the this drawing has like like a lot of anxiety to me something there's something about the mood that I really like about your alls. <laughs> it's really fun. Um, yeah, good. Um, I'd love if you guys, even at this point, I'd love to get some like real photos of it, some okay. results. And then um, if you finish it, great. Do you want to finish it next week? Do you want to wait and just do the other guys next week? I'm good either way. Whatever you guys want to do. Yeah. What do you guys? What do you think about that? Sometimes wanna, I work. You know, if I have time, I, I sometimes I work on it on my own here, you know? Yeah, no, I know. And I think it's, I think there's definitely enough information that you guys could do it for homework. You know what I mean? You don't need me to do it. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> what do you think, Adele? What are your thoughts? I'm debating. I mean, I'd really like to finish this, um, whether I'll do it on my own or or do it together next week. I'm, I can go either way, I guess. So I usually have a private lesson on Friday at 10 and they canceled a Zoom private lesson. Do you uh -oh. wanna just do, you wanna do like a bonus class tomorrow at 10? Hmm. Well, Good. I have an appointment at 10, 15 tomorrow. I, normally I would love to do that, but I, I won't be here, but you guys can. Grace is muted. We no. can't. You said something a minute ago. We didn't hear. Oh, right. <clears throat> Me? What I said? I said I can't do anything without Trevor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. I can't do anything without Trevor. Yeah. So, um, Trevor, you just got to come along for the ride. So we'll do. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow at ten, I'll do. You know, I'll just get on Zoom, and if you guys come, that'll be great. Um, and we'll finish the other guy and then, um, and then I'll send it. And then if you don't come, I'll just record it and send the video. Great. Now uh, Maureen, I'll yes. send you the video if you want the, great. and then you can go back and forth. I'd love that. Um, and next Thursday, I'm going to be in Colorado with family. So even, I don't think I'll have time to even sit down and do you virtually, but I'll miss next nope. week. All right. No worries. Okay. Uh, Great. Well, great. Yeah, so great. Can you do tomorrow or not? I cannot. Uh, so Rini cannot. I probably can. Let me check my calendar here. Yeah, I probably can. Okay. Uh, I mean, no pressure. What are, shall we confirm? Then, no, we've done. We've 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 completed projects before solo. So I don't. I mean. Um, I, I really don't mind doing it, and I'm, I'm sure Stacy will be able to do it. And she, um, I don't know what her deal is, but I'm sure she felt bad about missing today, so it might be. Yeah, she'll, 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 whatever happened. Uh, so shall we text you? Yeah. Shall we text you confirmation? Sure. Like this afternoon or something, once yeah. we know for sure, so you don't, you know, plan to come and then we're not there. But at least we let you if know. Nobody, honestly, if nobody's there, I will still just do it. Cause it's probably, it's probably better. I mean, it, say someday I do something with these videos, it'll probably be better to have it like done. You know, so yeah. if you guys come, it's oh. great. If you okay. I'll do it anyway and then send it to you. Great. So I'll be, I'll be here no matter what. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Cause if, if Rini can't be here next week, then 
it, w it wouldn't make sense to finish this drawing next week either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. Never thought about that. Yeah. Okay. All right, y'all. That was fun. Yeah. That was great. Thank you. Tomorrow, so next week. Thank you, you guys. Nice to see you. Bye, y'all. Uh...